It was pretty heart rendering to, uh, to hear of this case of the uh, vandalism in Lahore and I'm completely wordless because uh, throughout my architectural life, if you like, I've been fighting against uh, such vandalism from the, the public sector in, in Thailand. And this case reminds me of Oh, back in, this is nearly 40 years, when I first went back to Bangkok as a young graduate, full of energy, but, but very much concerned with the destruction of historical buildings uh, in our country. At that point, our uh, uh, foreign ministry our foreign minister, a very powerful man, uh, under the, um, at that point, uh, dictatorship, we had a military dictatorship, um, ordered the demolition of his building, the, mi the Ministry of, the, uh, of Foreign Affairs, which occupied a 19th century, a beautiful 19th century, uh, late <coughs> building. And I, I was the, the only person who stood up against him. Uh, later, the, our institute joined in, but it was mainly me. Uh, but luckily, the press, I think the press is very, very important. The press was behind me as a result of which half of the palace uh, was pulled down and I was almost punished because I was a government uh, servant at that point. But I had my own personal connections in high places. That's, I think that's important. But, um, so it reminds me of that, of that case nearly 40 years, and later, 40 years later, this year, the government somehow, or rather the Ministry of Foreign Affairs somehow, thought of the, uh, the old building. They've built a new building, but they've thought of the, uh, the old palace. So they, they are reconstructing what they have destroyed uh, 40 years ago. It's a full turn circle. But I hope that you won't have to wait 40 years to, to reconstruct that. And I hope the culprits will go to prison. When I go back to Bangkok next week, I am suing the governor of Bangkok for destroying the canals. I mean, I'm, I always get into these things. We have uh, the, the administrative law, luckily, so that any citizen can sue the authorities, can even sue the government for going against the law. And in your case, it's, it's, uh, it's quite clear that it's, it's illegal. So um, I don't know. I'm in the wrong conference, I think. <laughs> You know, this should be, I think you should organize another conference. Oh, don't project anything yet. Huh? Just shut it off. It's not, no, 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 no. No, 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 not yet. No, no, no. Stop. Tell him to stop, please. Okay, all right. No, right, I've, I've got to uh, get over this, get over my anger, because when I see the destruction of history, of historical monuments like this, I, I, I really get worked up and I get very angry. 
Oh, this reminds me another story. Um, when when I was school in in Europe, I, I think it was 1950. I was still very small then. <coughs> uh, there was some. Um, uh, that there was a project, a proposal to build uh, the motorway or an extension of the Autostrada uh, from mainland onto the lagoon into the Grand Canal in the middle of Venice in order to bring uh, 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 motor cars right into the heart of Venice, you know, via the Grand Canal with, you know, parking and all that. Uh, the Italians can be, you know, quite carefree, if you like, or even careless about their national heritage in those days. I suppose because Italy is full of, of historical monuments, so they, they, they didn't care very much. And the concept, and the concept of uh, historic conservation, I suppose, was, wasn't all that strong or in place. But the whole of Europe rose up against that project. Thank you. The whole of Europe rose up against uh, the project. And so the Italian government had to step in and all that. And they stopped uh, building the, the motorway into Venice. And that resulted in the founding of the European heritage uh, for which uh, the Duke of Edinburgh, uh, Prince Philip, uh, became uh, chairman. So that was the, the European heritage uh, movement. Right, so I've got to forget about that and come and be a good boy and uh, try to conform to the topic uh, of this conference. And I've noticed uh, that so many people uh, misbehaved. I mean, they didn't really take notice of your topic at all. Uh, <clears throat> so that's very tempting for me to uh, become tangential, if you like. But you know, when, I, uh, when I came, I picked up this newspaper, the Karachi Daily Times of Saturday, October the 1st. And it says here, uh, architecture, regional identities in a global environment. I mean, this is your topic. And it, it, it then went on to complain that, that architects uh, in this conference uh, went off on a tangent uh, and tried to say all sorts of things, but not about the topic of this conference and that they're trying to peddle that project also, which I'm going to do, by the way. Uh, so that, that's the, uh, the, the newspaper, which is very tempting. And then, I, uh, before I came, I asked uh, Arif, to, that is sitting here, uh, uh, whether, uh, who will be in the audience uh, whether there'll be students uh, or there'll be, you know, just uh, elderly, sorry, uh, <laughs> and pe people like me. Uh, <clears throat> and Arif emailed back to say, oh, don't worry, we'll be just students mainly, so don't, uh, you don't have to be too serious. So I didn't really prepare anything and I from form to place uh, by uh, Pierre von Mies. All right, next please. And I, I think I'll, I might stop with the next one. I don't know. Uh, next, it's a painting for, uh, to convince <laughs> my friend over there that I'm also a painter. <laughs> uh, and this is deconstruction. I mean, I've deconstructed racing car, uh, all on, it's quite a big canvas, it's a, 
I think meter and a half, something like that, across there, uh, painted in 1999. I've got lots more stuff, but I don't think uh, time would allow me, yeah? No. <coughs> May I? May I? Uh, can I go on? Yes. Right, right, quickly. Now, uh, uh, yeah, next one. This is called a tree building. It's a, uh, a more recent project. See the uh, the nation building or the you know the, the newspaper building in 1990. Uh, oh, by the way, there there is the sketch by Le Corbusier of that student shooting a uh, The robot building. Uh, building which I've mentioned. Uh, I won't say, no, no time to say anything about the robot. The, uh, the Plus de Nation scheme uh, uh, which I won with four other architects, Fuxas, uh, Peter Eisenman, Rem Kulas, and, uh, and Dominic Perro. Uh, uh, <coughs> and that was my building. Everything was designed. Uh, it, Construction drawings were ready. Uh, Kofi Annan <coughs> came to lay the foundation stone in fact. So that was uh, about 1997 when the foundation stone was, uh, was laid, and that was going to be my building, a new UN building, uh, a UN Institute building, and all this sort of, uh, um, invite. Um, uh, international competition. And um, uh, then the, the, the newspapers started to, to say, why should we em employ uh, foreign architects uh, to build buildings you know, in Switzerland? Because it's their money. It's, their, it's the, tax, the Swiss taxpayers' money. Because the money, you know, the UN is basically bankrupt. So U the UN in Geneva uh, has to be funded by the city of Geneva, by the canton, what is it called, of Geneva, and the federal government of Switzerland. So it, it's the taxpayers' money. And there we were, the five of us were chosen to, to design uh, new buildings for the UN under attack, simply because no Swiss architect uh, was shortlisted. Uh, and and the poor me, you know, from the third country, from a poor third country, being attacked as a foreign architect, you know, invading Switzerland. Uh, I say that uh, uh, very proudly because uh, this scheme of mine appeared on a series of posters uh, in Geneva uh, with a zip, you see, instead of that form, that would be a zip with money, coins, you know, flowing in into this purse. And the message was that, you know, these foreign architects are, have come here to design sort of outlandish buildings which are very expensive, you know, with our, with our uh, tax money, you know. So the money, coins flowing in with zip there. So I was very proud of that, that my building was used as sort of an anti-foreign architect invading uh, Switzerland. Anyway, as the result of this campaign, and they had, a, they had two referenda uh, after which we were all thrown out of Switzerland and the scheme didn't go ahead. I retained the posters. Uh, I uh, then sort of looked back. And I wasn't all that sad, I'm not angry, because even Le Corbusier was thrown out of Switzerland, if you remember. <laughs> I mean, who am I to be angry if my great hero was thrown out earlier on? Right, next, please. Uh, the robot building, I'll skip that because it's all in different books and uh, website. Right, next. Uh, next. 
uh, more painting, uh, Leonardo. This is sort of not typical me because I, I do uh, more sort of non-figurative or, or, or semi-figurative. Next, like this one. This is a, a tank. Um, <clears throat> next, please. Now I will come to my last thing, the a building which I, which I did last year. It's called the Privy Council Chambers. It's right next to, uh, it was built last year, right next to the Grand Palace. Basically, it's a U-shaped building like this. And on this side, <clears throat> which is the north side, there's an old palace, which I told you about, it used to be the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Uh, and it's an old uh, sort of colonial style, uh, neoclassical building. Uh, the, the, uh, the royal palace is on this side. There's a road in between. And there's a public park here full of big trees. And at the back here, there's a sort of traditional Siamese temple. So here I have sort of European neoclassical uh, uh, style. A very traditional Siamese architecture here, park full of big trees, and more sort of Siamese traditional architecture here with the Grand Palace. So I had to take in this kind of surrounding. I had to pay respect, of course, to the, to the Royal Palace. I mustn't be too flamboyant. I have to be insti institutional because this is a very high institution the Privy Council, uh, the, the councillors being advisors to the king. So what I've done is to dig a basin around three sides of it so that the building appears to be rising out of the water. The front part, uh, the outer skin, is a colonnade, which you will see in the next uh, slide. No, pro probably not, but just, uh, just to show you the uh, <clears throat> the group uh, the section, the section, uh, the volume of the building. Right, next, please. Next, next. Uh, when I refer to traditional Thai, uh, traditional Siamese architecture, here's a building which is very nearby. Uh, it's a temple. So, uh, this sort of arcade very simple arcade is, is repeated in my scheme. Uh, the, the, the roof is repeated in a, a sort of abstract way. Next. Uh, so that, that's the palace building, and this is my building here. So the roof, uh, instead of being elaborate like that, I merely suggest the gables, uh, the prominent roof line, uh, with just simple eye beams, which are also painted in a very colorful way. The Siamese classical architecture being very colorful, as you can see there. Next, uh, shows the, <coughs> the front part which confronts, which faces on to the palace. And if you remember that uh, temple building, it's more or less like that. It, it's simplified, so simplified that I think it becomes abstract or universal. And there, the, the pediments and the traditional roof, which is, which is a dom dominant form in traditional Siamese architecture. And uh, the water part uh, uh, harks back to the days when Bangkok used to be Venice of the East. The, uh, the, the colonial style palace is over there, and the park side is here, and uh, the, the temple at the back. Right, next. Uh, the view at night. Now, as we walk around the building, it becomes more and more abstract until you come, next one, until you come, well, this is still, we're still in the front part. The front, by the way, uh, faces west. So it, it, it's the, the, the warmest part of the building it, because from noon until five, half past five, the sun bangs onto it. So uh, that, that it explains why I have the arcade plus uh, brisole 
uh, and all that uh, on this facade. Next, and more of that, the details of the same facade. Next, uh, details of that again with the, uh, uh, the pediment. Next, uh, uh, the same facade again, different angle. Next, and there we are, the boats. Oh yeah, included in the, uh, the building contract were two old boats because I wanted to revive this Venice of the East thing and I, well, not part of the contract of the rowers, but the boats after two weeks sank. So they're now at the bottom of this artificial lake and the lake was also uh, planted with lots and lots of lotus uh, somehow turtles from the other side of the fence in the public, uh, in the public park, because there there's a big pond with lots and lots of turtles, somehow they could smell the lotus in my pond and overnight hundreds of turtles invaded uh, this pond and ate up all the lotus. So we replanted uh, the lotus again, but again they came over the fence and ate up all the lotus. So now the pond is without boats, without lotus. Next, please. Now, from the park side, as I was just, uh, telling you, the building began to, to transform itself, to respond itself more and more to the trees at the back. And uh, on the park side, it assumes the arboreal shape. It becomes the trees. Next, and uh, the, the water part, and the, the park, here's the fence of the park. This is park with the big trees, and the building on this side responds to the trees by assuming the tree shape on itself. Now, next, and more details of this uh, particular side, which is much more fun, of course, and next, I had to hide, uh, next, uh, I had to hide uh, this facade from the, uh, the privy councillors who are elderly gentlemen. You know, they're 80, 90 plus, some of them in wheelchairs, two or three of them. And they would have completely objected to that. Next, please. So I, I hid this side of the design from them. Uh, and of course, uh, uh, underneath this particular portico, I mean, in the classical idiom, this would have been a pediment and columns, you know, Ionic or Corinthian. And behind that is the most important space. And that is <clears throat> the, uh, the room, the main chamber of the president of the Privy Council. But all he could see through the window because he, he, he's in the wheelchair and he couldn't come round onto the park side. So he couldn't see this. So all he could see was just trees and sort of f slightly funny shape in front of his window. Right, next please. More details. So it becomes sculpture. It becomes, uh, it, it, it's a complete metamorphosis of the, a very austere front towards the back as you go around when the building is uh, completes its metamorphosis process by becoming a tree. Next. Yeah. And that's the end. Uh, more, more. Just go on. Yeah. Please go on. Go on. Go on. Yep. Go on. Uh, just entrance porch. Go on. Interior. Go on, please. Yeah, this sta staircase. As you, you look down the staircase well, and this chap in the white uniform uh, gives the scale of, of, of this place, of the interior. Next, please. Uh, interior carpeting. Oh, the, this elderly gentleman got to have carpet. Uh, if they walk on a, on a sort of marble floor or tile floor, they would feel very insecure. So I made a sculpture out of this 